Okay, hello. So today we're going to do Newton's method. Newton's method is basically a root finding algorithm that uses some basic calculus and we use it to find solutions to an equation. So for instance, if I have a function uh, x squared minus 2, I can define it in space time like so and I can plot it using an apple enter and I get this plot here. And if we look at it, it's got two zeros at negative 1.414 dot 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 and at positive 1.414 dot dot dot. And these two roots are plus and minus square root of 2. So if we compare this to the actual square root of 2, we get that. Um, if we want more decimal places, we can go to, let's say, fit, put it, go in the options here and just do a 15 and then hit enter and we get that as a, a more accurate estimate of square root of 2. So square root of 2 is one of these irrational numbers which means that you can't write it just as a quotient of two integer values. Um, okay, so what Newton's method does basically is we start from some initial guess, let's say 2, and then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a tangent line at, at 2 and see where the tangent line intersects the axis. And that's going to be our next most accurate guess. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is use that initial point and go up on the graph and then draw the tangent line at that point and then that'll get a little bit closer and we're going to keep doing this until we feel we've gotten close enough. So um, how, how do we do this? Well, if, if we know some basic calculus, we know that the equation for the tangent line is given by, so the tangent line at A is given by F of A plus F prime of A times X minus A. And so we already defined f of x. A can be any number, so it's, it's not a number here. It's going to be treated as an expression. And so here we have the equation for the, the tangent line at the point x equals a. So if we set a equal to 2, for instance, boom, we get an equation. Uh, so let, let's plot these two together. So f of x is this. This is supposedly the tangent line at x equals 2. If we, hit, if we just hit enter, we get a list of two expressions. Uh, one has our original function f of x. The other one has what we believe is the tangent line. And so when we apply them together, we get a nice little visual verification that, indeed, this is the tangent line at x equals 2. Um, okay, so this is the first step, is just understanding the method. So we've got a tangent line going here. And we say, aha, uh, this tangent line gets pretty close to our, our actual zero. So the actual zero is 1.414 to 1, dot, dot, dot. And our best guess using just the tangent line is 1.5, which is an improvement from the 2 that we started with. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to use this 1.5 and say, aha, we started with a uh, tangent line at x equals 2, now let's do a tangent line at x equals 1.5, and then we'll keep going. So how, how are we going to sort of code this up? So basically what we do is we start with some initial guess, x naught equals 2, and then if you do a shift enter, it gets you more lines. And so what I'm going to say is, all right, well, I want to figure out when does uh, the tangent line equal 0 for a given value of a, where here our a is 2. And it, it turns out there's a, a nice formula. Again, this is a very well-known formula. You can look it up on, on Wikipedia and whatnot. But what you do is you start with the initial guess, and then you're going to subtract the, or sorry, you start with the initial guess x naught, and then you subtract the function evaluated at x naught divided by f prime of x naught, like so. And so this will get you the next iteration. And so like we see here, it's 3 halves, or in other words, 1.5. And then we're going to now plug this in. So uh, say xm is equal to xn minus f of xm uh, n divided by f prime of xn. 
and that's going to be our next best guess. And we're going to just basically apply the formula over and over and over again. And so my, my notation here was somewhat suggestive of the fact that we're going to start with some initial guess, and then we're going to loop through and apply the same, uh, essentially, command at each iteration. So let's start with um, defining a function. Uh, we'll do that in a minute. First, let's just get the loop going. So we're going to start with uh, uh, defining a, a list. So I don't like to define a list as x because x is this variable name we set aside. So I usually just double it up and I do a xx equals a list of, let, let's do 10 iterations. Okay, so let's choose the first element to be 2. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through i going from 2 to 10. We're going to say xx of i is going to equal, and again, if you reference the formula up here, what we see is we're going to take our, our current value and then plug it into our, our tangent line solution for when it equals 0. So we're going to get xx of i minus 1, so the guy that came before it, minus f of xx of i minus 1 divided by f prime of xx of i minus 1. Like so. We do a shift enter to get a new line. We do end. And if we just evaluated this, it would compute everything and it wouldn't output anything. So let's output the list xx. So assuming I didn't do anything wrong, when I hit enter, this should give me a list of successively better and better estimates for square root of 2. And so it starts out with uh, some fractions. And so if I do it again, I get more decimal representation. So it does appear to be working. So let's look at the last few iterations. We didn't gain any accuracy. So let's compare this with the actual value of square root of 2 that space-time finds. Uh, and as you can see, it's, it should be right on, and, and it is. And so let's see, when did we get that? It only took us just a few iterations to get there. Yeah, just a few to get all these decimal of accuracy. So th this is um, one way to work with uh, Newton's method. So you, you'll notice that we defined f of x to be x squared minus 2. Well, let's, uh, we can change that. So let's define what f of x is right above. So let's say f of x was x squared minus 3. So now what Newton's method is going to converge to, or in other words, what this list should converge to, is square root of 3. And before I hit enter, I could change this initial value from 2 to 3. It, it doesn't really matter. The point is, I'm just going to start with some initial guess and, and kind of see where the list ends up. So I hit enter and I get successive iterations, and it looks like it, it bottoms out over here. So let's compare the, that with the square root of 3, and, and it's right on. Okay, so this is an example of how to use uh, Newton's method. It's a very simple formula, and as you can see, you only really need to apply it a few times to get, to get the accurate results. Um, so this is a good way to uh, look at all the iterations as as they go one at a time, but most of the time we're just interested in this in this final answer here uh, or the last member of the list. So what we can do is just change this ever so slightly and say okay well rather than print out the entire list we can just print out the tenth member. And there we have it. And we just print out the tenth member. Um, and there are a lot of other variations you can do. For instance you can uh, not save every successive value. You can overwrite the values, iterate through, save some memory. Um, you can change the function. So again, for this tutorial, all I wanted to do was show kind of the basics of how to get started. And then probably in another one, I will, I will take this even further to show really what kind of generality you can get out of space-time. And in fact, there are tutorials posted on the spacetime.us website that have some of these functionalities and more more generality.